What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, you guys? So we are back for another review of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 13, Episode 3, 10, 10, 2020. Okay? Um, first, before we get into the episode, I just want you guys to put down your honest opinions on how you feel like the season is going. I know we're only on the third episode, but give your honest opinion how you're liking it so far. Um, it's cool. I'm liking the pacing, but... I can't admit that there is some type of disconnect for me just a little bit, but I don't have that much of a complaint yet. But if it continues to go the way that it's going, I'm be like, okay, girl, you know, I'm 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 good with not so much heavy drama just yet. And most of the season starts off like this, but I don't know. It just feels a little different this season. Y'all put down in the comments what you think it is or how you're feeling about the show so far. But anyway, let's just get into this episode. Um, we start off with Miss Portia. Portia is down in Louisville, Kentucky again. And, um, you know, it's been over 165 days since Breonna Taylor, uh, murder at this point. And they're still down there, uh, protesting, doing what they got to do. They're going on bridges. And, you know, she was like, this is her bloody Sunday, just like the March on Summer, I believe it was. And she was like, her grandfather, you know, he was there uh, doing the March on the Bridge as well, you know, back then when it happened during Bloody Sunday. And so, you know, she's feeling kinship. She's feeling that ancestral, you know, heritage coming in with her grandfather. She's feeling that, you know, that oneness. So she's out there doing her activism. And, you know, she said this time, of course, when she got arrested, um, they made a point to make sure that she was the last one to do, uh, to get released or whatever, trying to prove a point and all this stuff, whatever, woo, woo, woo. You know, I applaud Portia for what she's doing and, um, uh, where she's trying to take her storyline for right now. Okay. Um, it's cute. It's cute. And I'm liking it, but... I'm really hoping that the whole, her, her, all her scenes ain't going to be like this. But I'm pretty sure they're not. But, you know, because some people, some people just rule or I ain't even going to say rule. Some people just really don't like the the Black Lives Matter protest, but um, angle of her storyline. But that's what's going on. That's what's been going on. And we've seen it play out. So it's only fair and only right for her to play it out on TV. That's part of her storyline. I feel like her storyline is more authentic than you know, it then it's been previous seasons, okay? Because she actually has something that she's doing, you know? But anyway, moving on from that, um, we get Portia, not Portia, but Kenya. She was talking to Brandon. Uh, we haven't seen Tim in a while. We heard him talking to Kenya on a previous episode, you know, when she was going, on the first episode, actually when she was going to the lawyer's office, okay? Then... We get the whole scene with uh, Cynthia and her sister. You know, Cynthia talking about she wants her guests to wear black. Uh, she wants her bridal party to wear white. Her and Mike coming up in there, they're going to wear a whole nother color. And that's what's just going to... I really didn't care about that, okay? She just she just focused on having this wedding on 10-10-2020. October 10th, 2020, which eventually did happen, Okay. Moving on from that, what I want to get to is Drew and her husband. Now, after the explosive shit that went down at the end of the episode last week with him trying to gaslight the hell out of her, and I hope he really sits down and see all the ways that people reacted to his storyline, to him saying what he was saying and the excuses that he was using and see how much of a fool he looked. But 9 out of 10, he probably didn't. You know, most of these husbands or whatever, they don't read their social media. It be the wives and all that stuff. But I hope they see how stupid they look and how, and I'm going to say stupid on both parts because first of all, you're not going to just leave and give a stupid excuse about what a black man has to go through. No, you got your ass up and you left on your own accord. And then you didn't say where you was going. And she had to she had to squeeze that shit up out of you. And you literally left the fucking state to go to another state for three days. Something could have happened to your family within those three days. And you couldn't have been able to get there, you know, quick enough to, you know, see if everything was okay. That's the stuff that you don't think about. That was very selfish on his part, and he don't understand it. This is the next day, and they acting all like everything is okay. She talking about some things ain't great, but we just going to table it for right now. Table it, my ass. It's my fucking anniversary, and I ain't finna go out there. I, I left my anniversary crying. 
I left my anniversary crying and not crying from pleasure, okay? You didn't put it down on me so that I can be like, oh, baby, that was good. <laughs> you did the thing, baby. You did the thing. No, you didn't do that. You didn't do that. You hurt my feelings. You hurt my motherfucking feelings and had me in my room by myself crying in the goddamn closet in my good dress, okay? Drew, you stupid as hell because ain't no way in hell. Ain't no way in hell. After the first and a half day that I realized that that nigga wasn't coming home, locks would have been changed, okay? That's what would have happened. He would not have been able to come back, okay? He would not have been able to become to come back. He would have been up in a hotel, okay? And, and, and not playing around in the house like everything is all to the good. See, that's what I just don't understand. This is what y'all go through in relationships. That's what y'all do. That's what y'all do. Ladies, put it down in the comments. Men, put it down in the comments because I, if it was the other way around, she would have been all types of whores and all types of whatever names in the book. Like, for real, for real. Let's be honest. Okay? Because I just I just don't get it. It would not be me. It would not be me. And then the grandma trying to get the sermon ready for um what she want the, uh, the thing to be, you know, bridle your tongue. And he taking offense to it because he feels like you're talking about him. And they saying how he is and how, you know, he's very outspoken and all this stuff. And you want things to be going the way that you want and all this stuff. Girl, I wasn't even paying attention to that. I was just still focused on the fact that he was in the house and they was acting like everything was all to the good. Girl, y'all got to come better because this this unrealistic. This unrealistic. Is this really how y'all do in y'all household? Put it down in the comment. If your man or your woman... Y'all got into an argument and she left to go out the state or he left to go out the state for three days without telling you. Would you let them back in the house and everything be all good like this? Drew stupid as hell because as soon as that happened, it wouldn't have been no anniversary dinner. It wouldn't have been none of that shit. Girl, I'm just sitting here looking at this storyline a little bit fishy, a little bit sideways, okay? Because this just don't seem realistic right about now. Because that ain't no natural reaction. And you black, bitch. <laughs> you black, bitch. <laughs> Girl, no, knock that nigga out or something. Like, do something. I don't know. Maybe they trying to cut down on all that hood, you know, antics or something. But, bitch, it just wouldn't be me. So, um, Latoya comes over to Kenya's house, and I'm trying. I am trying. And I was looking at other people's reviews and listen, looking at the comments on Twitter and some of the comments on my thing and some of the comments on everybody else stuff. And everybody, just about everybody felt the same way about Latoya. Like, she's doing too much too fast, okay? And she ain't no different right about now, okay? Um, They spent this whole scene, this whole fucking scene, practically talking about... Oh my, first of all, first of all, since when, and I'm with Cynthia, whoever said, since when does Kenya befriend people so quick like this, okay? Like, they so, something about their relationship or this so-called coming of a friendship that they're trying to develop or has developed, it just does not seem so authentic. Like, that is what this season is giving me. A lot of stuff don't seem authentic right about now. And this relationship, this friendship, or whatever that um, her and uh, Latoya got going on, When I come over to my friend's house, I don't do all that. Y'all putting on like it's too much. And then Kenya telling her, I told Cynthia about what you said about Drew's hair and her pet. You know, calling it a, a cat and all that shit because of her hair and this and woo woo woo. And I'm sitting here like, okay, you know, um, you say you don't have an issue with Drew. You say that. You know, even with her bringing up the whole situation about the separation and the divorce thing, whatever, you don't have an issue with her. You know, you talk about your relationship with your husband and, you know, how things aren't going. Then at one, so when you come on, you say you're going through a separation, but you're going to get your man back. Then you say you're going, no, first you say you're getting a divorce. Then you say you're going through a separation, but you're going to get your man back. Then you're saying, let's go do some dating profiles or whatever. God damn it, Latoya, what the fuck do you want? Like, I'm confused at this point, you know? And at this point, you're going in on Drew and her hair like it really was that bad. I've seen worse, and it wasn't that bad, okay? And then they're laughing and joking and cracking up, and it's just so fake. <laughs> oh, my God, like, 
right with all of the hairdressers in Hollywood. That's the best that you could come up with. It's like, what is that on her head? <laughs> What was funny about that? What was that damn funny about that, I should say? That y'all are literally cracking the fuck up. Did somebody pop an edible? Is somebody on some shit? Like, I'm confused about what's going on. And then you're doing a little dating profile for Kenya or whatever. Like, Kenya, let me tell you something. You talking about your ass too big, bitch. Your ass is just right, okay? Titties just right. To be quite honest, I like Kenya like this. You know, they sass and how she look now or whatever. Bitch, you look voluptuous as hell, okay? They love that. You down south, girl, stop playing. Stop playing. Girl, you'll get your man like, well, it's Kenya. I was about to say she'll get her man like this. But, you know, don't do no Drew shit. Get divorced first, okay? Get the, Go ahead and get that divorce, all right? I'm just, that whole scene just bothered me. It just didn't sit well with me. I was just like, fake. Am I the only one? Am I tripping? Am I looking too much into it? Y'all tell me. Shit. So then we get Candy. She got Cynthia. Um, Kenya comes over. They're all working out. You know, talking about how much weight they uh, gained. To me, they look good. But, you know, it's, it's what they're used to carrying. So, of course, you know, they want to get that extra weight off of them. And then, of course, Cynthia trying to get the weight off of her, too, for her wedding. And so once they finish doing their little workout or whatever, um, we find out that Candy and, and the family is doing a little road trip. Going to take the Sprinter. Um... I want to I wanna get inside a Sprinter so bad, you know. Um, I want to get inside of a Sprinter, and I want to play the Carters Heard About Us, you know, inside the Sprinter. You know, yes, I just really want to do that. Like, I just really want to feel, like, rich for a minute. Or, like, like I got at least over $5,000 in my pocket. You know what I'm saying? I just want to feel like I, I, I got that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> One day... <laughs> One day, bitch. But anyway, no, fuck that. So they um go sit down and you know talking about Cynthia's wedding. She wanted two hundred and fifty people there, but you know she's trying to make it so that she can adhere to the COVID nineteen guidelines and restrictions or whatever. You know, uh, Kenya giving her advice, and truth be told, what Kenya was saying was correct, bitch. Like, girl, y'all can have a wedding out here at fucking Lake Bailey. Get a goddamn tent and get your ass in there. You know, do what you gotta do, and that have all the people up in there. You know, you can social distance a little bit better. Better, you know, shit like that. But of course, Cynthia doesn't really want to do all that. She's want to get Mike to go look at the venue of what they want to go through, and I mean, have the uh, wedding at which we already know they wind up having it. Um, but anyway, so with that going on, you know, they was talking about discussing prenups and stuff like that, and how you need to go ahead and talk about that. And you know, King and made it sound so simple, okay? But we know that it ain't as simple as that. It should be, I come in with my stuff, you come in with your stuff, what's yours is yours, and what's mine is mine, and what we make in the relationship slash marriage, that is what we divide together, you know what I'm saying, 50-50, if something happened, but unfortunately, for some people, it don't work out as smoothly as that, you know, so they were just talking about all of that, and I mean, I did chuckle a little bit when Kenya was playing, like, you know, talking about Candy's driveway and how it slows down, and she was like, bitch, I sue your ass because, look, you know, when her getting on the floor and all that stuff, that was funny to me. It, it made me chuckle. That made me chuckle a little bit. Meanwhile, we get to Portia and her sister. What's her sister's name? Lauren. They're going to pick up Tanya. Girl, I forgot all about Tanya, okay? With all the drama. See, the hype that, you know, the drama that was supposed to pull us in that they made it in the previews, like, it ain't even enough. The stripper gate, I had forgot all about that. And it made me forget all about Tanya, okay? Until just now, you know? Um, she's out there with her sister's 10-month-old baby girl, which was a cutie. She was a cutie. And they haven't seen each other in a long time. They're about to go to the new cast member, Fallon, you know, her house. Uh, she met, um, t she, who they met through Portia, okay? Portia met her um, because her husband is one of the restaurant owners, uh, one of the restaurants that they always go to. 
and you know they struck up a little kinship or whatever and uh she was like yeah you can come over to the crib come over to the crib bring whoever you want to and that's what they about to do next thing you know they started talking about what's been going on through quarantine and how relationships just ain't been going right you know tanya's like listen it was cute at first i'm like yeah i'm so glad paul here and all this shit that's like bitch please get the fuck away okay it be like that sometimes don't mean that i don't want to be with you it's just like give me my space okay you go downstairs i'm gonna stay upstairs right now all right but then, you know, they get into Portia and Dennis shit and how they was, you know, doing all what they need to do at the beginning of quarantine and, you know, fucking here, eating here, doing all this, cooking and everything. And next thing you know, they get into an argument that didn't sit well with her and, you know, she just had to choose herself and now they're no longer together. We will see how long that lasts because I feel like they're going to get right back together. Okay, they ain't together now, but truth be told... They could be possibly working it out, and we just don't know, you know. But that's what was going on so far. So, um, Portia and uh, Tanya and Lauren, they get over there to Fallon's house. We get introduced to her. Um, we don't really get to know much about her. I guess she's like a friend of the show. I don't think she has a peach, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I think Drew is the only one that got the peach and Fallon and Latoya are like friends of the show, just like Tanya and, um, you know, Marlo. But they get introduced to Simon, her husband, and, you know, he seems like a really nice dude. And I think, you know, it's a total difference between the way Latoya was introduced and the way that Fallon was introduced. Fallon, she made herself more, you know, like hospitable to people. And she wasn't so extra, whatever. You know, she was just even killed. I can see myself, you know, like kind of like somewhat trying to get to know Fallon because of that. Because I don't like all that extraness. Not right off the bat. Now, when we get to a comfortable place that I can call myself an associate or an acquaintance of yours. And then I can see we working potentially to a friendship. And I can see how your personality really is. And if it matches with mine. And if it does, then we can get to that goofy place where we just going all out and being crazy and having fun or whatever. But when we start off, I got to really like observe you and see how you are. And some of that shit like with Latoya, that shit turns me the fuck off. Like I just not, I'm not, I'm not that type of person. But with Fallon, she was really cool calm collected you know they was doing the hookah she let them into her home we don't get to know much about her yet um like i said uh the girls was doing a hookah you know she they was talking about wop and girl she said her wop is uh her whole somebody said they hold is one uh, one size fit all like wop i said girl okay be yeah, poor she was looking like all right and then that producer gonna say something, but ain't WAP good? Ain't all WAP good WAP? Uh, baby girl, no. <laughs> no, okay. But uh, anyway, so they doing that. They start having a little fun, you know, throwing each other in the pool or whatever. Fallon didn't take offense to, you know, them trying to throw Lauren in the pool. Then they tried to throw Tanya in the pool. Then they threw uh, Fallon in the pool. Then they went and got into the hot tub. And then it got serious for a minute because they started talking about Portia getting arrested, talking about Breonna Taylor, talking about Jacob Blake, talking about all of the killings that we had to go through this whole year. You know, we sitting here reliving this that we went through this summer. And as they're talking about it, and I'm sitting here like, wow, we did go through all of that. All of that happened this summer in this year of 2020, this crazy ass year of 2020. It was so much stuff that went on. We literally lived through all of that, you know, talking about crying for days. And, you know, this is what we always seeing and we're getting tired and what we have to do. I like the moment. I like the moment. It was cute. Um, but then we moved on to... Um, Drew and her family, you know, she doing a little packing, wanting um, Ralph to do some packing and move boxes or whatever because they supposed to be moving into a new home. Okay, that's a few a uh, block, a couple of blocks or whatever down the street or whatever from where they're at, and this is the first home that she'll be purchasing um, ever. And so, you know, she's talking about. Uh, 
basically, do we really got the home? That's what we need to find out. Do they really got the home? And he's talking about, I got to get my lawyer, my lawyer, my this, 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 this. And she was like, our, our, our. Like, you know, she's telling us about Ralph and how he's controlling, how she's never wanted to be a dependent person, but how he's a good man and all this stuff. I'm looking at their relationship and it looked cute on the outside to look at, but it's a lot of dysfunction that's going on that I'm kind of seeing and I don't like it. I don't know how I feel about it all the way. Okay, maybe this just, I don't know. You know, he talking about something. My job is to do the paperwork and your job is to pack and all this stuff. And I'm just like, hmm. Every time I see them now, after that first scene with them, after that last week's episode, every time I see them now, I'm like, hmm. Okay, because it just wouldn't be me. I'm still stuck on it, y'all. I'm sorry. The preview for the uh Real Housewives of Potomac. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh my god okay that preview was so much more interesting than what this episode has been given i'm just gonna be quite honest and that preview was like five seconds okay but anyway <laughs> cynthia she's going to uh cynthia and mike you know going to look at the place to get married and everything and you know mal is coming and you know she tell us that mal is close to uh mike they're cool and you know they kind of think the same way whatever but she hoping that mal would get him to understand that this is what we need to get married at in this governor's ball mansion or whatever and so they're taking a little tour around they finally get to the end of it where they see the gazebo where they're gonna get married at if they get used this place and mike takes it upon himself to ask the, the important question what is the COVID 19 standings you know what i'm saying and so of course you know, Cynthia's in her feelings a little bit because she feels ganged up on like nobody has her side. You know, she's like, you're my sister, Mal. You should be on my side. Cynthia just wants to get married in a big place, okay? And Mal had at one point said, even if this don't work out, there's always Lake Bailey. Everybody keeps saying there's always Lake Bailey just in case it does not work out with this COVID stuff. Girl, okay. And so, um, is that a mo, bitch? Where the fuck did that come from? Anyway, um, so Dave was going over that. And, you know, my whole thing is, I don't care where we get married. Just, I want it to be safe. And I just want the date to be the 10, 10, 20 that you trying to do. First, you say it's not, imp it's so important. Now you're saying it's not important. Whatever date we get married, we get married. Girl, at this point, I don't give a damn about this wedding. We already know that they got married on 10, 10, 20. They just going through the motions back and forth. And, you know, that's basically what was going on with them. Trying to figure out what's happening because... I'm more so, I think like Mike, like I don't care about all this big fancy stuff or whatever. I just want to get married to you. That's what's matter. It's not about having all these people. I can get married to you with just a pastor or or somebody from goddamn City Hall just coming in, a judge from City Hall saying who uh, I pronounce y'all man and wife or wife and wife or whatever. And I will be fine with that, okay? I don't need the fancy shit or whatever because it's a waste of money to be quite honest, okay? I know it's a celebration. We can go celebrate at the crib and have a barbecue cookout for free. Okay, I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm a, I'm a frugal bitch like that, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, they trying to get Cynthia to just have a plan B just in case something happened because we are in a pandemic, okay? What if something happened that, you know, a week before and we can't do this, you know? She don't want that. Girl, okay, Cynthia, do what you gotta do. Cynthia got her wish, though. The episode, the episode ended with them still talking about the whole thing. You know, are we going to get married? Are we going to get married? You know, Cynthia going back and forth. At first, she's saying it don't matter. I just want to get married to you. He just want to know, are they going to get married on 10, 10, 20? She says they don't know. She don't know. Mike is pissed off. I be He frustrated. Everybody frustrated because things just don't go the way that they need to go. And it always happens, you know. And that's all that he was saying. Just in case something don't happen, right? Let's just have a plan B. And I forgot to mention that Drew and her husband, they um Drew went and found a little counselor or whatever for them to go talk to and all that shit. And child, we'll see how that works. Anyway, that was the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about it, okay? Um, the episode was Yeah. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. And I'll see y'all later for Real Housewives of Potomac. Peace.